Namaste, good people. Welcome to my channel, Bald Head Harrifant here. If you are new, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you are returning, welcome back. I appreciate all my newbies, okay? All my old schools and all of the, um, the ones that just kind of sneak in, peek, see if I'm talking about something you want to hear and you leave. All energies welcomed here, okay? All energies welcomed here. I hope everyone had an awesome day today. I'm coming on uh, because I just have a few things that I want to talk about. I don't have a particular theme. Uh, I tend to uh, come on like this often where I just have several little different things that I want to touch on. So um, one of the first things that kind of, um, you know, raced to the front of my mind when I said, oh, I think I want to do a video tonight was the importance of having things on you and around you that remind you of the vibration that you want to be set in, okay? I feel like that is so important because it's so easily, easy for us to get distracted that if we don't have little reminders, okay, of things uh, that'll kind of snap us back into that good feeling place, okay, or that, that good feeling vibration that it's so easy to get carried away with the current at times. So, you know, it is our responsibility to stay um, in alignment. Uh, nothing's going to come down and put you back in alignment. It's a effort, a deliberate effort at that, that you have to put forward to make sure that each time you are faced with a vibration that is not in alignment with the vibration that you want to be in, that you have something in your immediate surroundings that um, puts you back in your place, okay? That good feeling place. So that's one thing that I want to um, speak on. Give me just a second. That's one thing that I want to speak on um, tonight, okay? So we'll, we'll, I'll go briefly into that. Now, I am a really big decor person, okay? And anybody that knows me personally knows that. <laughs> I am a Taurus woman with a lot of Tauran placements. My fourth house is in Taurus. So I believe in creating a safe space. I believe in creating a nurturing place. I, re I believe in creating a sacred place. I believe that your home and your body okay, um, should be the safest place on earth for you, okay? There should not be another place or another person that you go to or reside or depend on to bring you comfort, nurturing, safety, and support more than thyself and more than thy home, okay? Um, I'm another big thing I am really, really big on. <laughs> it's not allowing a lot of people in and out of your home, but I'll talk about that on down the line and why. But as far as having these, um, whether they're talismans or, or um, amulets or tattoos, um, just anything. It could even be a cold word. It doesn't even necessarily have to be a thing, okay? It could be something that just, that you specifically chose or, or, or um, designated as that thing that is going to bring you back up to that high flying feeling when something, uh, you know, when you encounter something that removes you. Now I'm a big tattoo person. Okay. As you see, and I believe that if you're going to get a tattoo, it should be of something, um, that's one meaningful and purposeful and something that will, when you look at it, okay, you're not disgusted, okay, or, or shameful or regretful for getting it, okay. Now, one of the tattoos that I got, um, and it was, it was such a beautiful download when I decided to get it, but my reasoning for getting it was so pure and so genuine. Okay. Cause I wanted to remind myself every day of my feminine energy. I wanted to remind myself every day of how I am connected. Okay. Mind, body, and spirit to the divine. Okay. Specifically the divine feminine. Okay. So one of the, um, symbols, okay, mostly used in the Wiccan um, uh, system is the sign of the triple goddess, which is, uh, see here, her, she's upside down, but 
Okay, yeah, you can kind of see her. Okay, the woman with the spiral. Okay, she's holding her heads over her head. That's the that is the sign of the triple goddess, and she's beside you know the two half moons. Okay, and I'm sorry, not the two half moons, but the um, crescent moons, and then her body symbolizes the full moon. Okay, so it's the two crescent moons with the woman in the middle representing the phases or the cycles of the moon okay so the reason that that was important to to me is because i am a moon child okay and i feel those phases those phases of the moon are um very symbolic okay to my life now i do like to support people in learning more about the moon phases so they can see how that aligns in their lives as well but not everybody's you know not everybody's on that so i don't i'm not a pushy practitioner i am a supportive practitioner so i like to give information and if it's for you you grasp apply and move forward okay and if it's not for you i don't say oh i don't judge in other words so anyway but i brought that up because i i I like to make sure that I remind myself daily, okay, that I am a goddess and I am, I am, it is okay and I am supposed to change and go through phases and cycles every day of my life, <laughs> okay? And it is okay. I spoke briefly um, in the last video when I was talking about the polarities. I, I spoke very briefly about that bipolar word, okay? And um, let's just say that that was a diagnosis that was given to me, but I refused it. I rebuked it. I bound it and binded it, it, it up and I threw it back into the sea of negative nothingness that it came from because I was already beginning to learn and understand all about this feminine energy, all about my power, my superpower that allows me to shift and shape and change and morph throughout the month. Nothing wrong with me. Nothing wrong with you. But I don't want to get into that too deeply. Um, some people like to hold on to stuff, okay? Sometimes your crutches become so comfortable that when somebody jerks them away from you and you see that you can walk, you hurry up and... Hold on, y'all. I just seen a spider. Hold on. I just saw a spider. Okay. I hate to kill it, but it cannot stay here. So we are going to... We're gonna go get that thing gone. <laughs> and I'm not gonna not oh I'm not gonna not load this video. I'm still loading this video. Yeah. I'm not afraid of them, but you know, when they get scared of you, they bite you. See, when we get scared of them, we gotta go out and kill them so they won't bite us. <laughs> Okay, but it is very important, very, very, very. It's 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 more it's it's imperative that you make sure that the, that they that there are things on you or around you um, that you can immediately look at to realign yourself with your truth, to realign yourself with your power, to realign yourself with your mojo. Okay, and for me, this was one of those. Okay, beautiful symbol of the divine feminine energy. Now I have plenty more. I'm not going to talk about all of them. All of them do have uh, the spiritual, um, well, not all of them, but the majority of them have a very um, spiritual um, meaning in behind them, okay? But let me get back on track. This is not about me. This is about me talking to you guys about things that you can get. Now, of course, everybody knows about crystals. Crystals is, has become so common now that if you don't have at least one crystal, where you at? Where you been and what you doing? <laughs> Because everybody, even your non-spiritual people are starting to tap in and learn about um, crystals, okay? So, I have tons of them. Tons, tons, tons. So, there's no need to talk about that or maybe I will come back on at another at another time. I do... Hold on. My spirit was like, no, don't do that. It is some people who don't know anything about crystals. So it's certain ones that I do want to show you guys. Uh, spirit. <laughs> okay, so one of the first things that 
I suggest anybody who is tapping into the crystal game, one of the first things I tell people to begin to do first is to protect yourself. Because once you open up that third eye, you're going to begin to see a lot of things that's been there the whole time, but you were not seeing with this eye. You were seeing with these eyes. And these eyes can sometimes deceive you. But once you tap in and you connect and you have the desire to learn, is my camera crooked? You have the desire to learn. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, the veil will begin to move back and you'll begin to peek in behind that thing and you're going to see things, like I said, that's always been there, but you probably just didn't know what you were looking at or just was so busy with the world that you just didn't pay it any attention. All kind of reasons that we miss certain things, okay? So I said that to say this. Um, black crystals, when working with correctly, are able to shield you, okay, from those things behind that veil, okay? So one of those crystals, okay, is onyx, okay? Beautiful onyx. Onyx is a beautiful stone, okay? Onyx, just like um, black tourmaline, just like, um, it's one more. Mm, and it's right on the tip of my tongue and I can't think of it right now. Mm, mm, mm. Onyx, black tourmaline, and mm, I cannot think of it, but I will. So give me a minute. I'll just keep talking until that comes back. Um, are three of the stones, I can't think of the other one right now. And if I can't think of it during this video, then I'll definitely drop it down in the comments. But Onyx, Black Tourmaline, and I can't believe I can't think of the other one. Anyway, this is Onyx. Um, are three of the most popular protective stones, okay? So just do your research, because if I try to talk about the beautiful um, um, metaphysical uh, purposes of that stone. It'll take up all of the video. So that's one good stone that I recommend, okay? Onyx or any black stone. Just make sure you do your due diligence. Do your spiritual due diligence. Always do your research. Never just take information, even from a trusted site or a trusted practitioner. When somebody tells you something, you know, take it with a grain of salt. No matter how reputable they may be, you still go and do your own research. Vet everything out for your own personal understanding, okay? The next stone, tree agate. Very similar to moss agate. Look at both of them, okay? Look up moss agate, look at tree agate so you can see why I say they look the same. This is tree agate, okay? Known because of its veins, okay? The veins in it, and then if you see the beautiful, look at the center, the, the, cr the crust. I like raw stones more than, um, more than your tumbled stones because you're actually holding a piece of raw earth in your hand, okay? Raw earth, earth's crust, Earth's body, okay? Beautiful. This stone helps you ground, okay? You're feeling wavy. You're feeling uh, that escapism energy, like you just don't want to be in a place or don't want to deal with some emotions, don't want to deal with things, okay? Sometimes stuff gets so overwhelming that it makes you want to run away. Normal human behavior. Nothing wrong with it. Sometimes you do need to pack up and leave a situation or remove yourself from it, even if it's just temporary, okay? And then sometimes permanency is called. So always, you know, filter your situations through your own senses to see what you need to do. Never go on what somebody else tells you to do. If you feel like you need to leave, 
leave. If you feel you feel like you need to leave and never come back, leave and never come back. If you feel like you need to leave for a moment just so you can get your mind right and then come back and face the situation, do that. I can't stand people who live by that. You can't run from your problems. Says who? Yes, the fuck you can. And then somebody will even go as far as to say you run from your problems and they'll turn around and run from they're, they're, they'll run with you. That sometimes that's true and sometimes that's not. Sometimes running from the problem, if you know the problem is where you live and you pick up and you leave where you live, you've escaped that problem because that's what you were supposed to do. You were supposed to leave that person, that place, that thing, that situation. So you have to gauge your own situations. Don't go on with somebody else tell y'all that a lot of times that's how, you know, humans get hung up. You're going on what somebody else tells you and what's good for the goose ain't always good for the gander, okay? Now, the reason this stone would help anybody who's dealing with lack of clarity, lack, lack of confusion, you don't know what decision to make, is because grounding with this, meaning going outside, actually holding it in your hand, always walk outside barefoot as much as you can and as possible and, and as, as, oh, I'm trying, my, my tongue is, I'm trying to speak faster than my brain because some people don't like that feeling so do it as much as possible that's what i was trying to say do it as much as possible okay we don't we don't always want to walk in shoes y'all shoes stop us from grounding with the earth the bottom of your feet just like the bottom of your hands are your solar panels okay these help you connect to the sun the bottom of your feet helps you helps you ground to the roots of the earth okay so when you are feeling uh flighty it's because you haven't grounded. You haven't taken your shoes off and walked outside, get in that grass, get by trees, get by the roots of a tree and get your feet just as down in that dirt as possible. I'm not telling you to dig it up, but you know, if you can find a, a, a area by a tree where there's more dirt than grass and you can just kind of base your feet there. Yeah, that's what you want to do. You want to ground, okay? And in the process, you want to be holding on to one of your stones, possibly, and preferably a tree agate, okay? Now, in the event that you cannot get to a tree, just going outside, okay, in your yard, a yard, somebody's yard, okay? <laughs> And while you're holding your stone, okay, because what's what's happening is um, once you begin to like really tap in now, just standing there and just kind of looking is not it, okay. Of course, I'm telling you to stand there, and if you are a prayer, begin to pray. If you are a meditator, begin to meditate. If you are a tree hugger and you're by a tree, hug that tree, okay. Whatever you do to tap in, okay, working with this will help you deepen that and strengthen that and not only will you be deepening and strengthening yourself you will be activating and charging this stone so once you're done with that all the energy okay that your body has pulled up from the earth while you're holding this stone will be channeled and passed into this stone so now your charged stone can go with you OK, and in the event that you're somewhere, you don't have time to channel. You don't have time to take your shoes off and, you know, ground again. You just hold on to your stone and you ask this stone to tap in, help you tap in. So that's how you use your stones, y'all. OK, so that was another stone. Then we have unakite or unakite, just how you do, do, uh, decide to pronounce it. This is a very beautiful green and pink stone. What this does is align you with your heart chakra. It's that self-love heart space stone. You want to work with this when you need to grow that heart space, when you need to work on not just loving thyself, but even loving you know, things outside of you. It's a balanced stone of loving you and, and everything out, outside of you first comes loving you and then you exude and exemplify um, that self-love over into the world. So it's that old school saying you can't feed somebody else from an empty cup. Okay. So you fill yourself up. Okay. First, and then everything that flows over is what you can feed the world. And this is what Unikite helps you do. Okay. Hence that green and pink. So I'm not going to show any more. I could, I got to but that's all for the crystals, okay? But here's another little amulet. And everybody knows about that. Everybody knows about that evil eye, okay? It's just been saturated saturated, and used so much now that 
I'm starting to think that it doesn't even hold as much power as it used to, you know, back in those, um, Back in those sacred times when amulets and stuff were not as readily available today, back then as they are today, but you know, it is what it is. But if you charge your stuff and you don't expose it and uh, use it as a weapon of mass destruction, okay, you, you, you hold on to the set, to the sacredness of your stuff, then your stuff, no matter how diluted and 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 stretched out in the world the energy of the actual um meaning of your your stone or your amulet or your talisman is your personal one will be as powerful and, and as sacred as the ones back in those secret um secret times okay because there was a time when this type of thing wasn't even shown okay um we have lost the the sacredness of um of stuff and i, I I'm, I'm pausing because i'm a traditionalist okay so i believe that you have to put in work and show that you're deserving of having information, sacred, ancient information, okay? Because of the age of Aquarius, okay? Because of the age of technology, because of the age of computers and the internet and all of that good stuff, everybody has access to everything, but it waters that down because not everybody has good intentions, okay? So one person could tell you to get this and give you all of the information about it and tell you exactly what to do with it and, and how to do what to do. And then there's another person that's going to give you that same information, but this person over here may not be worthy of giving you that information. So now you're faced with misusing something that's powerful. Okay, so anyway, I don't want to get off into all of that. This is really supposed to have been about a talisman and all your amulets, but this is just another one, okay? You can wear it, okay? Mine has a hole in it, so sometimes I wear it, okay, as a necklace inside of my shirt. I don't rock it like a medallion. When I wear this, I don't wear it often, okay? But when I do, oh, honey, you better know that it is very intentional, and I knew that I'm going to mock somebody that... Or, or or in an or in an atmosphere where you know I'm I have to be protected how my and my energy has to be protected my body has to be protected okay so you wear certain things to certain environments when you know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you need your aura to have a barrier around it or you need to cloak okay so that's another one, okay? But um, again, and this video is already 23 minutes in and I haven't even got an opportunity to talk about some of the other things, but your oils, okay? Anybody that knows me knows that I make oils. I'm an oil conjurer. I love oils. I, I know the energy that I put into my oils. Um, my oils are not just put it on and, and, and no, my oils are... <laughs> There's a lot of spiritual energy, protection energy, love energy, magical energy, divine energy. Each of my oils are told what to do, okay? And not just when I'm making them, okay? But when I have someone purchase one, I call your name over that oil, okay? Before I mail it off to you or before it's sold at a pop-up, I might can't call your name at the pop-up. The name calling and the name ceremony is most definitely done when you order it from me directly. But when it's at the pop-up, as I'm creating the batch for the pop-up, I'm, uh, I'm saying as I'm creating my batches that each one that is purchased, let it go off and do the will of said thing, whatever the oil is to do, okay? So I'm looking at one of my oils here. This is a lavender oil that I keep on my altar on, on this particular 
little area. So I have a little altar back here. Okay, my lavender oil stays there. Add lavender. Lavender oil is... Sorry, y'all. Lavender oil is awesome uh, when you're working on that third eye. Lavender oil is awesome when you need to relax. Lavender oil is awesome when you need to um, tap in or increase that intuition. Okay. Just something very simple as putting it in your hands, rubbing it until it's hot. Remember what did I tell y'all earlier? These are your solar panels, okay? And if you take good care of your hands, they hold a charge, okay? I can tell somebody who has a very powerful charge if I touch their hands, okay? I don't really like to touch people, but if I'm if I trust <laughs> if I trust that you don't have dirty energy, okay? And I touch your hands, I can feel your energy just by feeling your hands, okay? Cuz I'm specifically touching your hands for that particular reason. Okay, so with oils, okay, because this is a part of the things that you can wear um, to remind yourself who you are, what you're doing, or that protection, or whatever you need that day. I'm still on the same subject line of making sure you're wearing things that realign you with who you are because you never know what you're going to encounter when you go outside, okay? So that I'm trying to bring it full circle because I know I've been all over the place this conversation. Even had to kill a spider, Lord. So, again, your oil. Two ways I'm going to tell you how to use these oils that will be powerful and maybe it's ways that you've never used it before or you could say, oh, I already do that. Either way, it's all good. For those of you who don't know, put that oil in between your hands. If you're working on your third eye, if you're working on your intuition, if you're working on increasing your psychic abilities, if you just need to relax, whatever spectrum you're on, you can put that oil in your hands. You can put it right here. And you begin to speak directly to whatever it is that you are working on, okay? You speak that, okay? Another thing you can do, rub it, place a hand here and a hand there. And you say those things that you are working on, okay? If you don't want to put it in your hands, then you can put it on your pulse points or your temples. So you can do here, you can rub it directly on your third eye, or you can put it here on your wrist where your pulse pulse coil pulse points are funny or you can put it right there on the base of the neck okay so that's how you can use um your lavender oil okay uh, or use my lavender oil I, I i i'm saying i said a lavender oil but i don't know i, I don't want to I, I just have to be very careful being very matter of fact about stuff because not everybody's oils should be used the same way if you're using my oils okay so that's how you can use your oils to do the same thing. Now, my oils are interchangeable. You can use them on your candles, you can use them on tools, or you can use them on your body. I hardly make oils where you you can only use it one way because I feel like everything that you, your magic stuff should be able to be used in multiple ways, okay? So I don't, because I'm like, I don't want somebody just to purchase something and they only get one use out of it. If you purchase something from me, nine times out of 10, it's multi-purpose, okay? So again, oils, okay? Your amulets, okay? Your crystals, okay? Your crystals, even your bigger crystals, okay? Bigger crystals, just as powerful. Can you carry them with you? You can if you want to. I mean, I I don't carry big crystals with me. Love my selenite. Got selenite all around me. Okay. But um, and then you know, I spoke on the tattoos, just making sure that you're deliberate and intentional when you get things put onto your body. So when you look at them, it reminds you of something that keeps you aligned, something that keeps you uh, protected, something that keeps you um, tapped in, turned on, and cut and 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 just always, you know, in alignment with the vibration that you want to be on. Okay, that that's that's so important. Again, because we're up against energies and entities and things that always, every day, all day, want to remove you from that good feeling, that good feeling vibration, that good feeling place, okay? 
So, um, I, I like to keep a, uh, I have a little bottle of, um, a little concoction that I make. And, uh, sometimes, um, even if I have my amulets and my crystals and my oils on, I still might spray that. Shh, shh. If I come out of the mall, the mall is one of those places for me. If I don't have to go to the mall, I don't, okay? But there's times that I do because there's a few stores in there that I like and I go shop with, over with my daughters. But I feel like if I don't protect myself and and cloak my aura, because this, this has happened to me before. If I don't cloak my aura before I go into the mall, um, I have a very magnetic aura, which means a lot of stuff attaches itself to me. So I have to make sure that I'm double cheeked up <laughs> with my magic stuff, okay? With my mojo, I have to. Because if I don't, then I get drained, okay? I get drained and I know I can always tell when oh, I don't have enough gear on because I leave that mall and baby, it's like I've been fighting for my life, my whole life. <laughs> That's how I feel coming out of the mall. And it's simply because I didn't have on enough protection, okay? And empaths already know exactly what I'm talking about. And I try, I don't, I'm, I don't do titles, so I don't claim I'm an empath. I don't even really like to use, you know, the everyday terms and slang terms of, you know, to me, it's making, it, it, you know, you don't have to. I don't like to fit into boxes and stuff. And I noticed, you know, that this trend of everybody wanting to be this and be that to try to feel more of something in the witchy world and the spiritual. I don't know. It's just crazy. I'm just, I don't talk about it. Anyway, if you are an empath, okay, then you totally understand what I'm talking about because it's real okay so all right i just i hope that this was valuable information um i know i just did a lot of a lot of rambling on i'm 31 minutes in um just make sure that you're protecting yourself okay that's really it um so many things that you can do i just really named some of the more basic things and you can i mean i don't know if you guys are interested in readings you like doing your own readings but one way you can protect yourself too is buying yourself your own oracle deck if you're not comfortable with tarot and pull your cards every morning and ask you ask your cards to show you that which you need to know to get your day started you lay yourself three cards follow through Okay, get get an oracle deck that is conducive to what you want to be. Get a deck that is conducive to the delivery that you feel that you would resonate with. And I'm saying that because some people go and get their newbies and they'll run and get a deck that's hard to even understand. Okay, too complex if you're not a natural channeler, if you're not a natural uh, being of divination, if you're not a natural intuitive person, and then you go get an oracle deck that's not as easy to decipher, then you, you, you ain't doing yourself no good. So I just said that to make sure you get a deck that speaks your language is all i'm saying okay just get a deck that speaks your language um i have one out right here this is the lee norman deck and this is these are not tarot and they're not oracle okay they are they're called under the rose okay and this particular deck i would like to say you need to be an experienced reader in order to really get the full understanding of this deck otherwise this de decks like this will confuse you because there's a lot of symbology on the cards that if you're not familiar with let me just show you guys if you're not familiar with like this clouds and even though they're simple words lock it okay but some of these things have deeper meanings behind it, okay? And if you lay down three cards and you don't really understand the symbology, okay? Or the numerology or the colorology, okay? Then 
when you're laying them down, you won't be able to make a storyline, okay, for yourself. You won't know what it's saying. I mean, if you see a horse, girl, son, are you really going to know what that's telling you? So the easier the deck, the more clear you, your message, okay? So I know some people just like to do, you know, some people want to be deep, but you can't be deep too soon if you don't understand some of the more intricate details when it comes to cardomancy, okay? So, but I brought that up only because there are certain decks, certain oracle decks that you can get that just kind of lay it out, okay? Do I have one? One of my one of my favorite oracle decks is my um, Ganesh deck. Where is Ganesh at? He might be downstairs. Yeah, he's downstairs. It's a beautiful deck, number one. But then it just it'll have a couple of words, but the word but it'll tell it might say something like, um, oh I don't know. I just I wish I had the deck up here with me. Where's another one of my good, good oracle decks? Okay. Moonology is a good oracle deck. Especially for those of you who, I'm sorry for being off the screen, y'all. But especially for those of you who are in tune with the moon, the uh, moonology deck gives you a really good, like if you laid three cards down, well, it would give you, like this one says, full moon in Sagittarius, okay? And it's, it's telling you, it says, look at the bigger picture. So, and it's not that the moon has to be in Sagittarius when you pull this card, but it, what it is telling you is to channel some Sagittarian energy, which is a more grandor, expansive look, which aligns with the message. Look at the bigger picture, or you might get, Full moon in Aries, okay? Now, it doesn't mean that we're in an Aries season. It won't mean that the moon is in Aries. But what the message will be telling you is to uh, uh, prepare because a, a fiery climax is approaching, okay? So then you begin to, to look for these things to show up in your life or to show up in that particular day. If you're pulling for the day or if you're pulling for the week, pulling for the month, you know, or just pulling for a specific, you know, situation, event that's going on at the moment. So, you know, I hope I'm not losing you guys. I know I'm all over the place again, but I think I'm saying enough stuff and you guys are able to stay, you know, connected with it. Because really this whole video is just about making sure that you um, have things around you, okay, and things on you or things readily available so you can always divine on your behalf, so you can always protect yourself, so you can always tap in and, and have immediate uh, solutions when you encounter confusion, when you encounter um, things that come in to test you, okay? You can set your day up in such a way that every moment of the day, you have clarity because you got your stones in your pocket. You got your oil on. You got your tattoos shined up. You got your amulet on. You got that cold word that you use. That kind of reminds me, which this is kind of way off, but if you guys watched, <laughs> it's not off. It, 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 it is relative, but it's, you'll see. Did y'all watch uh, Kevin Hart's stand-up? where him and some chick had a cold word when he was starting to feel uncomfortable when they would be doing sexual stuff. And he was like, pineapples. And the girl was doing a certain thing. And he was like, pineapples, bitch, pineapples. Anyway, that was his cold word. Okay, so even in spirituality, you guys, you can have a cold word when you are feeling overwhelmed or you or you feel like the universe is dropping too much on your head and you like, pineapples, hold on, bro. <laughs> like, come on, you know, come on, apples, pineapples, uh, now laters, you know, whatever, whatever, shoes, nigga, hold up. Look, okay, didn't mean to say that word, <laughs> but I'm just saying y'all get the, y'all get the point, you know, just got to figure out certain things to do and say when you are in need of immediate relief, 
okay? So that's what this is about. Having things around you, having things on you, having things already created in your head that you can use to call in help ASAP, okay? Or to cloak you so you won't even have to, you know, uh, you can just kind of look at that thing and that thing will know that it is time to activate, okay? So that's what this is about. That's what this is about. So um, I think I sleep want to do a little reading for y'all before I leave. It won't be a long reading, but Spirit said, give them, a little, give them a little read, okay? So I will. If you've stayed with me these 40 minutes, thank you so very, very, very much. I appreciate your attentiveness these days that matters because so many people are just impulsive they don't like to stay on videos long okay even if it's something that's feeding them people's people's attention is so it's leaving the attention span is decreasing but i'm not gonna get off in all of that people stay if they want to stay you know and that's good either way if you're still here thank you subscribe comment Comments, comments. Okay. So I shall use what are we using today? Am I feeling fairy? I believe I'm feeling fairy. Yeah, I'm feeling my fairy deck today. I love my fairy deck. This was one of my very first decks. My fairy deck. I used to sing to this deck of cards. And they loved it. The energy of this deck is very, very, very sensitive. And I used to sing to it. Sometimes I would be shuffling the cards and trying to get them out. And they would be stubborn. Okay, Like they didn't want to read. They didn't want me to use them to read. So I started singing to the cards. And literally, they would just fly out. I'm not going to sing on camera to the cards. That's a little... Uh, a little secret something I do with these cards not to be shared with everybody but yeah I used to say to these cards when I first first got them to kind of loosen them up and they loved it and I'm calling them they because the fairy the fae family the fae people are very real whether you believe it, but whether you believe it or not for those of you that know, you know and if you don't know it's okay if you don't believe in fairies that's fine that's fine. Just know they don't believe in you either. So you can't utilize this the, the magic and the help and the assistance of the fake people, okay? Because you don't believe in them and they're not going to manifest themselves for you nor help you manifest things that they're over. Because certain manifestations, okay, are governed by certain beings. And there's a lot of I'll just say earth materialization that the fey people are over. So if things aren't materializing in your life, it's probably because that's rude, that that thing or that that aspect that you're seeking is ruled by the fey people and you don't have no access to it because you're not a believer in them. So they're not a believer of you. So that's just that. I'm going to come on and do a video about the fade very soon. I have to get their permission because I think they don't want people to be forced to work with them. They want people to come at their own free will. And when people make videos about them, it just makes people curious. It's not that they really begin to have a true respect and understanding for the Fae. They just curious. And then that makes people fake use Fae energy, which is not good because they're they're not what you think. They're not these cute little orbs that they are but they also know fake energy. So if you fake, they gonna come and show you <laughs> fake. They gonna give you some fake. Is y'all don't misuse spirituality or spiritual beings? Okay. So the Ace of Summer is the card they wanted to come out first. A very beautiful message because we the Ace of Summer is the Ace of Cups in the traditional tarot. The Ace of Summer talks about a new love, a new fling, something that's going to bring you fulfillment, something that's going to bring you satisfaction. 
intimacy, not necessarily intimacy that's uh, connected to sex. It could be, but more so um, a connection, an emotional connection, okay, an emotional connection, um, having this given to you or being in a position to give it to somebody. So let's see. Show me more, Faye. cards came out the princess of winter which is the princess of swords in the um, or the page of swords in the um traditional tarot we're talking about somebody who's very inquisitive okay uh one thing about that uh page or princess of swords she can sometimes be a little too a little too hard just in our words, a smart mouth. This would be one of them young, smart mouth energies. Just always got something to say. And, and whatever she has to say is very, it's just very sarcastic or condescending for no reason. Okay. So the second card that came out was the three of autumn, but it was in the reverse. Now, I don't normally read reversals, but I think I'm going to keep this in the reverse because I feel I can tell that the story is um, aligning better with this card in the reverse. So the three of autumn, which is normally the three of pentacles in the traditional tarot, uh, if it was in the upright, that means having um, assistance, help teamwork okay planning and and support in this planning okay but with it being in the reverse coming out beside this princess of winter this smart mouth person i believe that you're probably ready to love you you're ready you you're ready for a relationship but you don't really understand how your mouth is what's causing people to not want to be with you. They may like you in the beginning. You meet people. They, you, you know, they, they, they. I don't, I don't know. I don't want to necessarily say they're drawn to you, but you meet people easily and effortlessly. But you can't keep them. You're not able to grasp on to them. They're not willing to stay and help, plan, support you. They're not in this. They don't want to teamwork with you because of your mouth, because of your, and I think that you've probably been told this by people, but you don't get it because you're like, but that's how I always been. But that's the problem. <laughs> There's always room for change. There's always room for growth. If everybody has been telling you this, then clearly you're the common denominator. Okay, you're the common denominator. So everybody is not coming together to co-conspire against you. So there must be something that you're doing. Okay, and we could be talking to a Libra. We could be talking to a Pisces. We could be talking to an Aquarius. Now, this is not a reading just for those people, but the Princess of Winter would denote one of those three signs. Okay, or just having that, that energy, the energy of Libra, the energy of Aquarius, the energy of Gemini, and even the energy of Virgo. Okay, um, so I could be talking to any of you guys, okay? But again, this reading is genderless, it is zodiacless, <laughs> and it is timeless. So when you find this reading, okay, it, that means you found it right on time for you. But most definitely um, speaking to somebody who just, you know, you're difficult to talk to or you're difficult to communicate with. Not because you don't listen, but because your response or your delivery is is very smart mouth. Okay, some people some, some some people probably think you're an asshole. Um, not the kind of asshole um, like um, disrespectful. No, 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 not that type. Just sarcastic, condescending. Okay, very. Now, as I was speaking, I also heard spirits say that there is somebody that wants to come into your life, but that's they, they're already in your life. 
are they already in the life or they want to come in? Okay, so it's both. Somebody wants to come in for some of you. Some of these people are already there for some of you, but it's the same result. They're not willing to move on with either letting you know how they really feel because your mouth, okay? Somebody wants to come in. They want to, but they don't like your... You need to learn how to speak truth with kindness. I'll just say that. Speak truth with kindness. Check out where your Mercury is. Because your Mercury could be in Libra, Aquarius, Gemini, or Virgo. I'm most definitely talking to somebody who has their Mercury there. Your sun may not be there. Your sun sign or your moon sign may not be there. But your Mercury most definitely is. Show me more and why. What's going on? What is it that this person... Bring us closer into truth and show me what it is that this... Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, it, listen. Ace of Autumn. This is the Ace of Pentacles. Somebody... Not... Listen. <laughs> Somebody was coming in. Not only do they want to love on you and be intimate with you, they even got the money that you... I think you've probably... You may be going through a financial crush right now or some type of financial difficulty but somebody wants to come in and share their money with you okay somebody's trying to come into your life that has what you need they can bring a financial windfall into your life but i don't know if they're willing to take a chance on you verbally i'm not gonna take that i don't I, I, because i feel like that the person that's wanting to come in is moving in a masculine energy okay not feminine okay or not woman or man energies masculine feminine okay so this person it could be a woman but she's probably she may be uh very matter of fact very masculine okay so if this is a woman and you are a man she may be the kind of woman um just a no-nonsense woman, okay? And maybe your response to stuff in her eyes is very immature and very childish and sometimes very feminine-ish. Maybe she feels like you respond like a chick, like she expects you to be more manly in the way you respond to stuff, but you respond to her with a very smart mouth. And in, you know, down here on earth, okay, that is looked at, a, a, a man with a smart mouth, that is looked at as a very feminine trait, okay? Now, of course, if you are the female, okay, this man is looking at you and saying, I want to come in her life, I want to take care of her, but she just, her, her mouth too smart and I just can't deal with that. I'm just, I'm not going to tolerate her, you know, disrespect me or, or belittling me or talking to me like I'm dumb because that's what this energy is talking about is you talking to somebody like they're slow okay that condescending sarcastic energy so let me see let me I want to know show me clearly is it are you going to fix this I hope so what's the outcome to this beautiful situation because let me tell you, I, I think it's beautiful because regardless this energy is here to bless you it wants to come in either you don't know it or you I don't think you know it at all matter of fact I think this person, whether they're coming or they're already there and just kind of on pause and watching, you don't even have a clue. That's what's messing it up for you. You don't even have a clue that they're feeling this way. I I don't I, I, you're you you're so smart mouthed <laughs> that you don't even know that it's turning this person off, or you don't know that they're on to even be turned off. So you just saying anything because you don't even know that this person really had their eyes on you. They really they really saw you as girlfriend material or wife material, but that that one little idiosyncrasy which is your mouth is what's making them say I don't know. That's this 3 of autumn in the reverse is them saying I don't know, but they got it to give. They got love, intimacy, satisfaction, fulfillment, money. <laughs> stability they got this to give and they want to share it with you but your mouth got them saying oh no 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 what i won't do is deal with that mouth <laughs> 
show me clearly what it is that this person that is resonating with this message can do. Show it clearly, I say. Show it clearly. Stop it. <laughs> Ten of winter. Stop it. It ain't no uh tempering it. It ain't no I'm a try. No. Spirit said, stop it. That's what the Ten of Winter is all about. The ending of something. Letting it go. Let me see what's on the bottom of the deck. Two of Summer. I love it. Two of Summer is the partnership. That's the coming together of two people in a, in a, in a very loving way. It's it's almost like marriage. It could denote marriage, but if it, it if it's not marriage, it's most definitely a relationship. It's partnership. It's the coming together. Starting off with the ace of summer, which is the ace of cups, the giving of fulfillment, the giving of love, the giving of, of fulfillment and satisfaction and intimacy, romance. And for that, for this, for this bottom card to be the two of summer, the two of cups. The coming together and the sharing of cups in this in on that card, it's it's a it's a man handing his cup over to the woman. It's not so much the woman handing her cup; she's still holding her cup, but he's handing her his cup. He wants to hand you, or she wants to hand you, her cup of love. But before she gonna give you that. You got to watch how you talk to people. You got to watch what you say. You got to tone your mouth down. I don't think you're yelling. You're not a yeller. You're sarcastic. You're a Virgo, <laughs> a Libra, an Aquarius, or a Gemini. You have to watch how you communicate. Your delivery is nasty for no reason. And you cut people down, not so much with the yelling and the... You may be a cursor. Or you may even be a um uh you know but I don't think you're loud. I don't no wands, no fire showed up. If if any of the wands had showed up, I I would say that you're probably verbally abusive because you're you're calling them out of their name and you're in their face. But you're not that. You're the you're the sarcastic, condescending kind. And spirit says, if you want this new love, if you want this new fulfillment, if you want this new satisfaction, if you want new romance, new intimacy, mind, body, and spirit, new money, the opportunity to live in a way that you haven't been able to live because your money has been crunched, your finances have been a little wavy, then you must, you must, you must watch your mouth. You must watch your delivery. You must watch your communication with somebody around you because this person is around you. These people are, this person is already in your immediate atmosphere, whether you know it or not. Somebody's watching you and they want you, but they're not going to show themselves to you, not on that level. They're not going to show that they're interested in you because they don't think you're ready. They they want to see they want to see this resolved before they step to you because everything that they have to offer you is entirely too valuable and they can't take the chance on you. Uh, they just I don't know I be, I believe that you're dealing with a person who is sensitive as well. This person is sensitive, so they're not going to take the chance on you being. Um, just nasty with your words and not watching your mouth and just, you know, verbally, just having a verbal diarrhea. <laughs> and I, and what's so crazy, this is a 60 minute reading, my goodness, or a 60 minute video. I don't know if I'm going to post all of this, my goodness. Might just trim off the other stuff and just post the reading. Excuse me, but I, I see clearly that you, I don't I know you don't know that this person wants you. So you acting up because you don't even know you don't even have a clue. And you just act it up because maybe you don't even see them like that because you don't think they see you like that. But they see you like that. They see you in this 
I want her or I want him. They see you, but you don't know that they see you like that. So you're treating them regular and they're seeing you for who you really are. They're seeing you for who you really are. And you don't have a clue that it's making them, mm -mm. I don't want, I, I, don't, I like her, she cute, or I like him, he's sexy, he's handsome, but mm -mm. that's how they, that's what they're doing. Like, nope, I got to see her, I got to see a 360 change or at least 180 before I let him know or before I let her know that I'm interested because I, I ain't, I ain't going to deal with her mouth. That's what he's saying. Or if it's a female, you saying, uh-uh. He's, he's so used to talking crazy to women. I, he can't do me. I'm not going. He ain't going to talk to me crazy. So whoever you are, you don't even know you're being watched. So I suggest that you get it together, boo. Get it together because whatever, what you know, whether you admit it or not, you know, you got, we always admit things to ourselves. We never really want to admit to the world, but, well, you know, because you don't have to comment on this video or anything. But you're going to, at nighttime, when you lay your head on your pillow, you are thinking, damn, I'm ready for that two of cups energy. Damn, I'm ready for that ace of cups energy. Damn, I'm ready for that ace of pentacles energy. And that, all three of those energies are readily available to you, but they are on pause because of your mouth. So if this is you, Ten of Swords that did that, did that energy, and and it's simple. I don't want to hear nobody say, "Oh, that's me. I've been like that all my life. I can't." Y'all, well, if you want true love to uh, present itself to you and not be, not necessarily this person's not intimidated. They're just disgusted with how they see you respond and your delivery and your, and your sarcasm and your uh, that condescending way that you you try to make people feel stupid you know that's gonna that's go, that's been your downfall that's how you've lost friendships that's how you've lost relationships and it's going to be the reason you don't have a future with this person and this person is your person this person is somebody that would make you happy but you don't even know you have a chance with them because they're not letting that they're not letting that be known because they're just sitting back watching you. Like, mm -mm. so change your ways, baby. Change your ways, divine beloved, because there is a there is a true beautiful love waiting for you. Okay. If this is where we part, thank you so much. This is the longest reading I've done. I hope I haven't lost you guys. <laughs> If you stay the entirety of this message, then thank you by all means. May you get it back in return, okay, on every level. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe, like, comment, share, and namaste. Good night.